Welcome everybody to peer number two, the Charlotte Street Foundation here in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, super excited to have three artists as our guests tonight in our second part of this uh, year long series peer, which is uh, basically a way that we're going to show the city and different people, three different artists, different points in their careers. And just this is a quick, rapid, just kind of elevator speech, get to know them, see what they're up to, just kind of everybody kind of getting out there and getting, um, you know, a little sense of bonding and seeing each other. So if you can't get out to the openings and whatnot, I'm just kind of trying to do it virtual for now. And then eventually we will do this in our library at our new building we're super excited about. So make sure you keep following this and we progress over there. But anyways, tonight this we're going to get started. So we've invited three artists and uh, thank you all of you, Michael Krieger and Mikhail Shapiro and Robert Castillo all have uh, graciously um, created a little slideshow presentation that each gonna have five minutes real rapid. We're gonna go with them right away. And then we're gonna save a little time for Q and A between the artist and listen in between them. And if you have anything you would like to ask, you can put that in the comments as well. And we will address that the best we can. So anyways, um, my coworker Hope is going to be running the audio and the video and maybe some special sound effects, you never know. Um, so Hope, why don't we get it started? And we'll go with Michael Krieger's video and Hello. we'll progress from there. All right. Hello, my name is Michael Krieger. Thank you for inviting me to share my work in this forum. I'm gonna start by reading the statement from my latest exhibition titled, Just Like Starting Over, now open at Hawk Contemporary through April 21st. My statement begins with a haiku. Just like starting over, mourning our losses, fresh-faced, trees sing, we begin again. Postscript. A tree can be a friend to another tree in the sense that one tree can help another tree and they might spend a lifetime together side by side. Humanity is not one thing and the world another. We share in the experience of the tree by knowing the tree. We share in the losses and new life around us. Language is inadequate to describe our experiences. However shared, words fall short and create limits and boundaries. With the pictures I make, I hope to share something beyond language, multiple truths, truths unique to an individual and others ubiquitous yet unspoken. The poetic truth and the mythic truth can exist simultaneously, at once revealed and concealed. You can see something for what it is, what it depicts, or you can see something for more than it is. And you can see something for what it means to you. I begin with the sun and I end with the night. This exhibition takes place over the course of one day. The spaces in the gallery lend themselves to setting up a narrative as one gallery leads to the next and to the next and crescendos with the larger main gallery. I thought about the idea of allowing yourself to start over every day, and I wanted to echo this idea conceptually with the narrative of the work. I'm looking at natural occurrences for ways to begin again and found the transformative power of fire. I found symbolism in caves and comets I found optimism in trees, and I found thoughtfulness in spider webs. I enjoyed being able to combine works in drawing, watercolor, and painting, and the shifting scale of the works. Some images are intimate and others bold, some are illusionistic, and some are flat and graphic. Each medium gave me different tools to play with and approach the theme in nuanced ways. The idea for this painting, titled New Growth in an Old Forest, was the original impetus for the exhibition. My family and I visited the Redwood Forest two years ago. We went in the springtime, and I was enamored by the brilliant chartreuse bits of new growth everywhere. 
and the coolness of the forest juxtaposed with the warmth of the sun breaking through the trees. I have been working on this exhibition for two years. Often I will give myself a year just to think about an idea. This is a way for me to create potential and internalize the ideas and generate imagery. The physical making of the work took place over about one year, probably one of the strangest years to be creative. In preparing this exhibition, there were many starts and stops, fears and hibernating, loss and shared resilience. There was a prevailing feeling that everything I did mattered and nothing I did mattered. It was a constant feeling of high stakes and low stakes. Going to the grocery store was at once a life-threatening expedition and simply a means to replace the empty milk carton. What I did in the studio mattered immeasurably because it was a moment of solace and merely something to pass the time, not knowing if the work would have an audience. As I wrestled with trying to be focused and creative throughout the pandemic, I found more and more meaning in my ideas. The idea was simple from the beginning, to make work that was about starting over, beginning again, and to create works of art that would allow other people to experience their own emotions and intellect. If I could create a starting place that was embedded with my own thoughts and feelings, others might have a place to relate. Each piece in the exhibition has deep personal meaning for me, but it was never my intention to relate that specific meaning. The idea is that if I can be earnest and sincere, others will connect to something within themselves. Wow, thank you, Michael Krieger. Beautiful, beautiful way to start this evening. Um, and I forgot to mention, Michael is coming, uh, he's based in Lawrence, Kansas, which is about 40 minutes away from Kansas City. But in my mind, he's a Kansas City artist because he's shown here for so long. I, I feel like I associate his name so much with Kansas City. So it felt very important that he uh, be a part of the pier um, tonight. So that's great. We're going to keep moving, though, in uh, Robert Castillo. Hello, I'm Robert Castillo, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity to share a little bit about myself. Thank you, Pat and Charlotte Street, for putting this on. I've been creating visual art now for almost exactly three years. A friend of mine and great artist, Brandon Forrest Frederick, challenged me in March of 2018 to create enough visual art for a solo show that following December. Creating visual art has since become a passion deeper than I could have ever imagined. In these three years, I've made some incredible connections and friendships. Before discussing the visual art though, I'd like to give a super small snapshot uh, into what my relationship with music is like for those who may not be familiar. My formal education is as a jazz bassist. Aside from the upright and electric basses, I play piano, marching tuba, and a variety of other sound-making contraptions. In college, I took music composition lessons and have written over 50 compositions and arrangements for everything from avant-garde, uh, chamber ensemble, to big band arrangements of jazz standards. My largest composition is a concert band piece I wrote as a high school graduation present for my little brother last year, who played saxophone in the band. But because of schools going virtual, the piece was not performed that spring. I am excruciatingly excited to share that the piece is having its debut reading tomorrow. I'll definitely be sharing updates of that process on social media. The Sextet is my contemporary jazz brainchild. I like to call it a groove jazz ensemble. After college, I lived in Central Oregon for a year where I had ample free time and wrote a ton of music. Most of these tunes were for jazz sextet, though I did also write a solo piano etude during this time. When I moved to Portland the following year, I formed the sextet and recorded these songs into an album. I reformed the group when I moved back home to Kansas City in 2016, and we recorded two more albums. Among Friends is a title of the most recent and refers both to the abundance of guest artists on this two-hour album and to the longing for a day when every one of us can recognize the inherent humanity and friendship in one another. All three albums are available on all streaming services. One of my favorite compositional techniques to employ is fusing elements from disparate genres to see what happens. With a sextet that's manifested in a multitude of ways, including a verbatim arrangement of Debussy's Claire de Lune and an Afrobeat arrangement of the jazz ballad My Funny Valentine. Sometimes I like to joke that I got my painting degree from YouTube University. 
The internet is such an incredible resource. I feel very fortunate to be alive at a time when YouTube exists. Shout out to Kansas City's own Ryan Delgado, whose video series on the underpainting and grisaille style of painting uh, was very beneficial uh, beyond measure. I mentioned earlier that I greatly enjoy composing music in a diversity of styles. These four paintings show how that enjoyment has carried over to visual art. Five minutes is such a short amount of time to try to share all of this. Uh, I really suggest checking out my website and social media to get a better idea of the spectrum of my paintings, music, everything. Uh, I do want to comment on this fourth one, titled Mayan Reverence. I refer to myself as ambiguously brown because my ethnic heritage pretty much includes everything, including Mayan. Uh, my father speaks the Mayan language fluently, uh, but more on that in a little bit. This third one here is a painting of my wife. This is the first time I ever tried painting a realistic portrait in the underpainting grisaille style. This painting was completed about a year ago. What a strange time that was, transitioning to shutdown. Video chatting with friends was a great way that I could stay sane. <laughs> the top cutaway over here shows that this is a self-portrait depicting myself video chatting with three friends. Uh, the middle cutaway there is an upside down crown or corona in Spanish uh, is, and references how under a microscope the virus has a crown like shape. And in the, this bottom cutaway uh, is a form that symbolizes the human genome. In biology, a retrovirus is a virus that has embedded itself within our DNA. Retroviruses are responsible for proteins that form the placenta and allow us to have memory. Viruses are so integral to human physiology, and I'm really curious to know how COVID is going to affect human evolution on a genetic level should it too implant itself within us as a retrovirus. I'll just start with the disclaimer that there's so much more here than we'll be able to discuss. Uh, I'm going to be featured on St. Louis-based artist Jasmine Raska's podcast titled Archives for Aliens coming up pretty soon. Tune in to social media when that goes live. I'll talk about this painting in depth there. Uh, but this painting was so instrumental in the reconstruction of my relationship with my father. That story is told, you guessed it, on social media. Uh, I would like to highlight a couple things here that aren't on social media, though. The title is actually a nod to Salvador Dali. In 1921 and 1925, Dali painted his father and titled both Portrait of My Father. While both are relatively realistic, especially consider, considering what Dali went on to paint, there is a distinct stylistic uh, difference between the two. I, ha I do have plans to paint another portrait of this man, and I'm excited to see how they're going to differ. The second highlight is between the final two progress shots. Notice how drastically different the leaves become in the top right. In the original photo of my dad, the upper right is neutral, blurred area. Uh, as seen in the third shot. In the sixth, you'll see I improvised some leaves in this area, knowing I'd want to change it somehow. It wasn't until the last photo uh, that I realized the other leaves are compoundly palmate in structure, while my improvised ones were elementary at best. So I imported leaves from uh, elsewhere in the painting, and uh, which, which is a landscape orientation originally. Uh, you can see that on Instagram. This last shot shows how I painted these leaves in grisaille, then began to layer color. Now, there are some parts of this painting that have eight layers of color, some only have one, and that is, you know, how you get that depth, that, that, that literal optical illusion um, with oil paint. Uh, so, with this uh, bundle of leaves in the top right, in painting, this is known as a pentimenti, and an x-ray would show the hiding layers underneath it. This process is actually how the Nelson Atkins Museum here in Kansas City learned that they own a Hieronymus Bosch painting that was hiding in storage for 80 years. Lastly, I wanted to just share a little bit more about me personally. Uh, in the top left, you'll see these two photos of myself at Burning Man. Uh, one, I'm sleeping after a very long night of wiggling about in the sand, and the uh, second one there, just dangling from an art structure that more than likely got burned by the end of the uh, end of Burning Man. Uh, I just, ah, uh, it is such a wonderful experience to go to the Burning Man. I've been there four times now. In the top right, you'll see that I love backpacking. Just those vistas that you can only see when you hike to. It's just unparalleled. Uh, in the bottom left, that's uh, 
I, I volunteer with several organizations, one of which is Cross Lines Community Outreach. I used to actually run the food pantry there, um, but here I am with the Young Professionals Board. We you know, do a lot of volunteering, fundraising for them. I'm actually going to be hosting a paint and sip uh, fundraiser for Cross Lines. Uh, tune into social media for those details. And then lastly, here in the middle and the bottom is a photo of myself with my wife, Catherine. Um, we, ha, she's really great. She's really awesome. Uh, yeah, go ahead and, you know, check me out on social media. My website's right there. Uh, I try to be as comprehensive as I can with everything. Uh, hit me up. I really also try to be as thorough in my responses as possible. That sometimes results in delayed responses, but, you know, just know you're going to get a good one. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Robert. <clears throat> it's wonderful. I really appreciate uh, the generosity of going in there and with your work. Um, and it's great to see that after Michael looking at all of his uh, treescapes as well. There's nice things happen in there. Um, I'm going to keep this moving. And Mikhail, who is our last guest, uh, Mikhail Shapiro here from Kansas City, very active. Uh, again, sort of like Robert, you'll see. Um, we'll get that one going and then we'll save some time for a little questions between the artists. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Anne Calloway. Hi, this is Mikhail Shapiro. I'm a filmmaker and musician. The following clips are from some of my projects. Anne has recently suffered a miscarriage. And although she lives in a beautiful house and has the job of her dreams at a toy museum, she hasn't slept for days. She's been given a slew of prescriptions to cure her ails. But despite the miracles of science, she still can't seem to get enough sleep.
Hellbender's population has been devastated. Due to rising temperatures, water pollution, the mysterious kindred fungus, the Hellbender is now an endangered species. Two hundred years ago, we feared never being free. The real question is that after all this fighting, marching, and dying, are we? That seems like a good stopping place. Maybe we can do this again sometime. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Hope, thanks for running all of those. Appreciate. Um, congratulations to all three of you. It's, um, I'd say I'm maybe I'm a little jealous to see all the cool things you're doing. I'm feeling I need to get up my butt a little bit or something. I don't know. Um, anyways, I want to uh, let this, uh, maybe the artist could talk. Maybe, Mikhail, you're, you're a documentary person and like, good at questions. Maybe you have a question for one of the other artists? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so this is... Uh, how how much I'm gonna just direct this at both the other artists. Um, how much do you think about um, where your art is going to be, like the context of where it's hanging or where it's the context of the space of where your art exists in? How much do you think about that? Um, do you think about that at all in the process of making your art? I'm just going to leave it at that. Well, thanks for that question. Um, I think it's a, oftentimes a luxury to be able to do that. Uh, a lot of times you're making something, you have no idea where it's going to go. Um, but when you do, it's quite wonderful uh, to be able to think about the space and how you'll occupy it and and even a kind of rhythm or flow that might happen as people move through it. Um, so I guess I think about it when I have the opportunity to. I'd love to hear what Robert has on that. Yeah, I, um, not physically. I don't necessarily think of where it exists physically, but more so temporally. Uh, I really enjoy it. So I'm actually uh, in a class, I'm taking a class this term at Johnson County Community College in our history class. Uh, honestly, in an attempt to get a visa to travel to Spain to see the Kandinsky exhibit at the Bilbao over there, but that's a long story for another time. And in this art history class, we're talking about, uh, we're, we're because, okay, I don't have any, I mean, I just started painting three years ago. I don't know any of the history, so I'm, you know, taking this class and, and learning a lot about the context. It's really beautiful. And currently we are in the, uh, the French Revolution time, and they really speak heavily of how artists were the chroniclers of the time and in that. And I really think about that uh, quite a bit is where it exists in time. Uh, the, the painting, the first painting we took a deep dive in, uh, hashtag social distancing is, you know, expresses the sentiment, at least, you know, how, how I'm feeling and seeing that uh, in this moment. And I also showed one image of uh, post-classic Mayan imagery from around 580, uh, but I do have a whole bunch of those uh, that style of painting because I really do feel a responsibility to keep those images that that tradition alive because uh, it's you know it, it's dying and I really don't want it to I'm trying to get my dad to teach my nephew I don't plan on having kids anytime soon well, I'm trying to get my dad to teach my nephew mine he's like a, a, a year old so you know fingers crossed <laughs> fingers crossed um, thanks oh. yeah so yeah 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 it's great Michael you yeah. Anything? What are your thoughts on all seeing you know, all these? I did have a question for the other oh. two also. I'm so curious, um, just about how maybe you think how you might think differently about what it means to be an artist after going through this sort of global pandemic and all of the 
uh, political things that have happened and other kinds of turmoil and things. I'm just wondering if that's changed how you think about your role as an artist and, and what you might think about that. I'll go. It certainly has intensified um, the, the necessity for me to have a sense of purpose in my art. That's not, you know, like the ex explorations of media is, I, I feel like I, um, I want to become more media literate because as things are moving and have been moving more and more to screens, um, how, how much of that affects us phenomenologically and, and our psychologies and our senses and our cultures and socially, like I, I, I feel like when I make stuff, I'm thinking about it on a lot of different levels, including like the meta level of how it's affecting me to watch things, to hear things, especially in relationship to this thing, this thing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you. That's, I'm, I've been trying to think of how to answer this question, but my role as an artist, I don't, hmm. Hmm, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't know quite how to answer that, Michael. Uh, I'm really not sure yeah. because primarily, I think the reason nothing is really coming to, to mind so, so serendipitously is because I don't know that I really identify with that word very specifically. Um, and that kind of leads me to the question that I had for you, um, but it, yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure because the, art, the word artist is not something I, I relate to, to too much. Perhaps that's because of how nascent my painting is. Um, you know, I definitely would call myself a musician. I definitely call myself a composer. I don't know. I just feel like I still have so much more to learn. I can't, I can't take on that, that word yet. You know, art of the artists, that's a huge painting with a lot of, you know, heavy hitters in it. You know, artist is a something to- Hey, earn. Robert, what if I told you you're an artist? Oh gosh! Well, you know, you, you know. <laughs> oops. <laughs> you got a question for Michael? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I typed it out earlier because I, I wanted to remember it. Um, here we go. So you you spoke at the beginning of your presentation about the limitation of words, and that reminded me of the the first verse of the Tao Te Ching that says that the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao, meaning that like any symbol combination of syllables you try to ascribe to the infinite is already limited. Um, so that was really interesting to me. So, but I, and I noticed that you speak very concisely and eloquently. I'm, I'm curious to know if you have always been comfortable with that or if that is a skill you've had to develop. Well, I like the Tao too. I, one of my favorite ones is uh, be like a mirror, see everything, but hold nothing. Um, I, I think it takes a while. It took a long time for me. I was very shy and I didn't speak that much about my work, but I just kept doing it. And uh, I just kept uh, uh, accepting speaking things until I got more comfortable with it. So, but you speak wonderfully, and I so enjoyed your presentation. It's such a, a wonderful voice, and and sharing all those things about your work, and this act of being a musician is being an artist and bringing such joy to the world. Agree, agree. I, I find it interesting how you, um, each of you can jump around very easily from mediums and whatnot. Um, Michael, I'm always excited to see what show you're gonna come up with. Is, is he doing watercolor? Is he gonna be doing pencil? Is he doing this? Uh, and same with Mikala, it's, um, you know, it's always a different project and it, how you keep up doing all of them. And I'm just kind of curious, like how you balance that or what, what makes you decide which project you're gonna put the energy into at that present time, or does that get affected like with what's happening right now? in the world. Mikhail? I'm a big collaborator. And so a lot of times it's um, either I think of someone that I want to work with or someone thinks of me and we, we spiral and orbit and um, come up with our, you know, some kind of creation that way. I mean, I've just been so fortunate to know so many incredible artists and a lot of them were in the um, in that Pecha Kucha that I displayed, you know, from Jessica Ayala to Les Ismore and Tony Laddish on the films and, um, and Mana at Odds, this band that I'm working with and my own band, which is just, I'm just so fortunate to be able to work with. So a lot of times it's just like, 
I, I'm I'm just um, playing volley with with the community, with the other artists in my community, because there's just like so many things bouncing around. It's so fun to just like get in the mix and see what what comes of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Michael, do you play an instrument? I know you was, you worked at a record store, right? Growing I did. up, my mom had a record store. That's when what I, I thought. There was some... My brother and I worked there. That's one of my favorite uh, uh, childhood experiences. It just really, really got into music then. But no, I don't play an instrument. Although I do look at some of your drawings, it's just, and I think it's not they're amazing. Though, I, I always think of album cover art, like sometimes. Oh yeah, like, well, some of your drawings. So good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. How about you, I Robert? To say hi to my friend oh, Beverly, sorry. who's there. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Beverly. Do you have a question? She probably has to unmute. You sent me such a lovely Hi, email Michael. the other day. Hi, Beverly. Hi. Hey, you know, I did have a question. Um, how do you decide which media to use for which image in this latest exhibition that you're in in Ha? How did you know which if it was going to be acrylic or watercolor or pencil or... What yeah, well, I think that? it had mostly to do with uh, the scale of things that the that I sort of saw the color pencil things as being much more intimate, and the mm -hmm. and the paintings as being sort of more grand that they would have that kind of impact. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm gonna head down there um, on Friday to go take a look. Oh, good. Well, thank you for that lovely email. I really appreciate that. I was really struck with your work. It was easy to be. Um, thoughtful to you on that yeah thank you and uh if the if they you know thank you beverly um if anyone didn't catch that so michael does have a show currently up at the hawk contemporary which is in the west bottoms in kansas city missouri and i believe you can find out more on michael's website there's links to that we're going to be posting everybody's links as well on the chat uh and yeah it, they just opened up and i know that's available you can social distance mask up and uh experience that yeah and we're going to do some kind of event later a talk and there's going to be a little uh, catalog that they're going to have so oh, later there'll be other things there'll be another opportunity to attend an event there fantastic so, but it's open all the time so you can go anytime nice um, i have a question for mccall if i can go ahead and ask that yeah yeah sure Yes, I'm, I'm really curious to know if you have a relationship with acting yourself. I don't know that I saw yourself as an actor. In, well, maybe perhaps in one of them. Um, yeah, I, I'm curious to know if you have a relationship with that and how, uh, how if you could describe how that may or may not have uh, affected your approach to creating music videos, to writing screenplays, scripts. Uh, what was that? I'm guess, okay, that's another question too, if I can ask too. How do you start writing a script? Where do you, where do you start with that? You got one minute. One minute. Okay, go. So <laughs> to answer all your questions, I am, I am not an actor. I'm the, I, if I don't have a guitar in front of me, I'm terrified of being, I, I don't really like being on the screen. Um, I like, I like to frame things and when I'm in it, I can't tell what's happening. So um, maybe that's because I'm a control freak in that way or something. But uh, so no, I don't really think about, I mean, I when I think about um, a script, oftentimes I'm thinking about, I, I, I believe in making reverse reality TV. So I'm like looking at things in the world and I'm just like drawing from the people I know, from the, from the, the settings that I know I have access to. And I'm kind of writing around the reality of just of, of what's available and seeing uh, stories emerge from that. I don't know, is that helpful? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's hilarious. Reverse reality TV show. <laughs> Love it. Thank you all. I, like I said, this goes so fast. And the idea of this was, you know, it's kind of like speed dating in a sense with art. And uh, we do hope to see all of you out and about. And hopefully you feel comfortable to go say hello to any of these people uh, when they're at a show and whatnot. I, they, they all seem pretty nice to me. So um, thank you all. Uh, we'll be doing this again every fourth Wednesday. We'll have another batch of artists. And um, like, again, thanks for all that you all do. It um, keeps this uh, community exciting and interesting and smart. So thank you all. And uh, thanks, Pat. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank Thanks, you, Pat. Guys. Yeah, have a good night, all. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs>